It's Real Fit Radio with B and J dot L O U. If you're a first time listener, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. Welcome back, y'all. That's it. Welcome back. <laughs> okay. I uh, just do our check in. How you feeling? Well, got the news. What was that yesterday that officially the gyms are closed back now? So back to the home remedy. Everything else has been business as usual. That's the only real big switch up, according to. To what our program is so now it's just getting back to finding those ways to be just as productive physically in the house as we were before this whole thing open back up and shut so uh, psychologically they can play a big role on different things in people's lives but we're good at calling audibles but i won't be the person to not acknowledge that that can be a frustration especially i know how you expressed many a times how the momentum is different for you in regards to the gym you enjoy working out a certain type of way and having a different type of environment sometimes you just want to get the hell away from your house and now that's being taken away again so yeah but audibles well as i always say you make the most you win a day but i'll also say that um it's frustrating the open close open close and for me, I like to create some sort of structure. I understand plans are blueprint references. They always don't go the way that you planned it out. But I think just with everything going on, everybody's kind of displaced. Even with me, my displaced is I'm trying to get away <laughs> from these groups of people that are displaced. So they're showing up in places that they wouldn't normally be. Like 5 a.m. at the gym shouldn't be as crowded as it is but the gym is kind of the new hangout spot and stuff like that so all of a sudden you know just a change just like that we're shut back down so i'm starting to have an understanding our last podcast had dropped about protecting your energy i am learning or getting a better understanding of just having to step back and regroup go back to the drawing board just mentally come up with another way that you're going to implement or attack your plan to win the day so i'm frustrated with the gym shutting down the restaurants and stuff they can keep it the stuff that they've been talking about with people not adhering to keeping their mask on and stuff like that just crazy to me i don't understand even if you feel like because that's like the big thing it's a hoax and all that stuff even if you feel like that okay fine but humor me if you will i don't know you you don't know me let's just put our mask on and be respectful of the common space that we have to enter be it the grocery store or what other essential business is open that to me is just baffling i don't understand it's just dumb you know i almost said something else but i try to think of a better way to put it it's just ridiculous because um why do you feel that you should be exempt from what's going on so what you have to put on a mask to enter the grocery store can go in there get what you're getting and get out or all these gatherings that are happening and so yeah anyway that's where i'm at i put myself on mental vacation right now i'll be back monday <laughs> to implement whatever type of plan or come up with for for this time that i put myself on vacation I, i'll be ready to tackle it but we're gonna still get this done we're gonna still move forward and and just push but um it sucks. So um, we can go ahead and jump into the meat and potatoes of everything. And I'm, it's my turn, I think. So in light of everything that's been going on headline wise, I don't want to just touch on it, but I will say where this came from because it's just running everywhere. This whole uh, Jada Pinkett, Will Smith, August Alcina. I don't even want to say the word the entanglement because it's like it's laughed at, but their whole situation they had relationship and normally I, we try not to just like kind of roll with you know talking about what's trending again you guys know we kind of sometimes before we even turn the mics on we switch the topics or the day before or maybe last night we just like oh we're going to talk about this tomorrow it's very just kind of like let's give it to you raw 
and uncut with the exception of the editing because we can get pretty lengthy. So we don't want to hold you long, but we want to make sure we get what we hope is something that assists you in a couple of ways, whether it's bringing you inspiration, it's impactful, it's empowering, or kind of making you aware of some stuff or getting some different insight from hearing us have this dialogue. But the whole Red Table Talk, August Alcina's interview, and all the stuff that's coming as like a byproduct of that. I keep hearing or seeing too, Will Smith, Will Smith, Will Smith. And people are saying via social media, they have it. When I open up my phone, Google was in print where you're seeing little blogs about it, all these different things. You see it everywhere. It's, it's trending. The topic that I'd like to talk about is the double standard that the world pretty much has when it comes to vulnerability with men versus women. And the reason why I've just been looking at it is because it's just like, I watched that red table. I watched Will Smith and it was short too, but I looked in his face and he laughed and he had the dialogue with her and he didn't cry. Everybody had their own interpretation. Like, oh, he looked like he looked so defeated. Oh man, he looked like why she don't want me. And it's like all these little jokes going on. But what I saw from him, he laughed, even if he was trying to laugh it off or just kind of like just be present and not make it about himself. He was kind of just there for her on her show. But the problem I have with all of it is what if he did just break down crying? What if he just said, I can't take this no more. I'm so hurt. I just feel like that wouldn't have been well received either. It would have been like, oh, he's being real bitch made. Why are you crying about it? You a man. You should be able to take that. It's just so much. I feel like society puts on males, period. Like they just put it on their plate. Like you don't have the freedom of expressing yourself emotionally. You're a man. This is what you're supposed to do. Versus as a woman, Jada sat right up there and said that she was hurt. And I was confused with that too. And I want to make sure, just catch me if I'm going off. She was hurt. So that's how she got into this side thing with August Alsina. And I haven't seen a whole bunch about her. I've seen some stuff here and there, but more about Will. You're hurt, and that's an excuse as to why you went and took advantage of someone that you said you set out to help and that you guys gave resources to. And I say you guys because they both said that the family in total gave these resources and stuff to assist him with getting better. I don't see her getting bashed as much as Will Smith is for the emotion part, why she don't want me. Dang, my family, you know, just slipping from my hands. Jaden's doing this. Willow's writing letters to Tupac. It's just so much mockery happening. And I'm sure there's some things I haven't seen, but what I'm seeing the most of, I don't think it's really looked at like this dude, regardless of what he did that we don't know about because that's their marriage, the world as a whole and social media can bully. I mean, they can bully the narrative. They can just make it what they want. You just keep seeing how it's just total disregard for this man's feelings. I mean, 50 Cent posted a screenshot. You know, he's making jokes about, dang, I hope you all right over there. It was just funny. You're making fun of it. Dang, you gave permission for her to get her back blown out. Everything is so funny. And it's just like, I don't believe it would be that way if it happened to her. The world is more accepting. They embrace. They're more empathetic when it comes to a woman's feelings. If she's cheated on, if she cries, if she shows that she just can't do it anymore. It's just like, OK, we understand that's what you're supposed to do. But we're all humans at the end of the day. I have a son. I just feel like, wow, what happens to someone when they're told from the jump, from little, like they tell little boys, you can't cry. You're not supposed to be afraid. You're a man. It's just so messed up. What happens to someone when they can't express their real emotion because they've been told it's unacceptable? How does that work? Does it turn them into the dogs that, you know, some women may say, you don't have no emotions when I mean, you can't pick and choose. He's emotionless here, but you need him to bring all his emotion here to validate how you feel, to love on me. It's just, it's crazy. So that's pretty much a good part of what we're talking about. I don't feel like it's okay, but what are your thoughts on it? I don't think it should be okay, but it just bothered me because 
I know he's got to be hurt on some levels and whatever he's done to her and she chose to still be there. That's their private moment. But this moment happened and they chose to address it and it's out there. And all I'm seeing is the lack of understanding, the lack of empathy, the lack of a place being created for him to express that he's hurt. Sometimes I feel like it's really difficult to come behind you because <laughs> the one point I thought I was going to have to myself <laughs> is the one that you had at the end, which was my opening statement, which is from the very beginning, a boy can fall off a bike mm -hmm. and start crying and they'll say, rub some dirt on your knee. It'll be all right. Mm -hmm. A girl will fall off the bike and cry and they'll kiss him and hug him and stuff like that. And, I don't really think that the people who are grown now really understand the psychological, not damage, but the psychological aspect behind it. Because I think it's damaged, though, is what you said. They're, you're damaged. We, okay, well, then we will yeah. use the word damaged. And that was a very good point. I didn't even think about it like that. When women ask us to be more emotional, be more vulnerable, and we've been taught for 20 some odd years to be this hard guy who's mm -hmm. nonchalant and don't show emotion and stuff like that. And then when it's time to show it and we can't exemplify that because we've never been shown how to as a man or it's punkish to cry. Or you were programmed. Yeah. So we're programmed to be that way. And now you want us to reverse all that training for the first two decades of our life, more than likely. Mm -hmm. And you want us to exemplify something that we've never been taught to do. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think it sucks from a man's perspective because I have trouble with that in terms of showing emotion or lack thereof. So I definitely can understand that. And this whole social media thing is just one big joke to everybody. And the only person, like you said, that's really getting bashed the most is him. You hit another thing where you was talking about the cheating thing. I find that funny, too, because it's another podcast I was looking at and a guy was saying a woman leaves a situation or breaks up with a man or whatnot. And she goes on social media and says, I've been liberated or free or whatever they say. And it's like good for you girl good for you and then when it happens for the guys as she does some shit where she's the one at that fault where she cheated it's like why well, wonder what he did to make her go do it mm -hmm. the dude don't get the benefit of the doubt he's just a bad guy all the way around so yeah we both have those double standards in the world well, we both got to deal with them. It's this particular one where you're talking about the emotional vulnerability, you're human. I think a takeaway for me would have been if I could do it all over again or if I was in the presence of a young girl that cried and a young boy, what I would tell them is it's OK to cry. Let's let it out. But what I want you to understand, young man, is that pain is only temporary. So it's OK to let it out right now. So let's let's go ahead. It's OK. Let's cry. And then. You will realize, guess what? That little scratch on your arm, you ain't even crying about it no more. It just takes some time. I think that's a better approach than telling young men that it's girly to cry. Because what you end up with is these men that's walking around with all these emotions inside. And they want to tell somebody what's going on. But they afraid of how their friends going to look at them if they say, dude, that girl hurt me, bro. Like, she scarred me so, oh, you old pussy ass, blah, blah, blah. So. It's something that I think that's a generational curse or a generational teaching that needs to be revamped. We need to look at that in a different way. Like unlearn it. Oh, yeah. No, because you can't have these men walking around with all this emotion. I think that's sometimes how these murders happen with these women where these dudes losing their mind over the girl doing something to them and it emotionally hurt them so much and then they've been bottling up so much other emotion that's been going on with other situations and they explode they just lose it yeah and then from outside looking in we looking at it ain't nothing that bad that should have made you do that but i don't know how much emotion that person held in to the point where they exploded like that so hell even j cole had a song i can't remember Remember what song it is i'm not gonna try to butcher the lyrics but i know it, i'm a paraphraser where he was saying that men have to walk around with this i'm um, hard face like well, i can't show this because if i look a certain way then people will test so i gotta put on this facade that i'm always hard 
Jay Z alluded to it too. You said in a, I think in the book you were sharing something with me where you were reading about where he said one person would be oh, looking at yeah, you one way an and it's interview. like almost like you I had to was, look oh, a yeah, certain it was way. Decoded though. Yeah, yeah, you have to have this certain type like toughness. You looking this way and you got to kind of return that look back. It's mm. like a a standoff or something. I mean, it just sucks. And I specifically am touching on this because it's going to be a double standard with all kind of stuff oh, in yeah, the world. No but this particular one, I believe it affects your mental health. Hmm. I believe you can become depressed because of it. I believe it's displaced anger, which you talked about how someone reacts at some point. Finally, I get some sort of reaction. And that's just like a ton of all types of emotion. Yeah, you don't even know where it came from. Yeah, where they're, they're expressing it all at once. Because, I mean, we're not condoning, you know, to, to go hurt somebody. But you just don't know to the level. I mean, because some people are just crazy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right, but, but there's... We're, we're referring specifically yeah. to these people who it's completely out of their character and it's like this is the first time you ever seen right you you were, it's something thing. completely like you said unexpected yeah but i also with that i don't think that that's even like taken into consideration like what is the inability to have empathy from people and also not being able to express myself emotionally how does that affect me yeah how does it affect me mentally people are always talking about mental health issues where am i putting this emotion it's displaced like where is it going because it got to come out somewhere it's going to come out somewhere and the other one is some people are depressed i think that's where a huge part of depression comes into play and i'm not a therapist or anything like that but how could you not become depressed when you can't express a part a huge part of you we are made of emotions you know i've even seen with you when we first got together it's like <laughs> Are you happy about this? Are you happy that I did this? And it's like, you know, I'm just being transparent. You like, yeah, I'm happy. I'm like, I've never seen anybody (laughs) express their happiness. And it took a while for me as we, you know, continue to get to know each other. Even before being married, it used to bother me because I just didn't understand why you didn't express like, you know, I'm yay. And then you were like, I don't express like you. But then it got to, I kept trying to like hit it because it's like, you don't have to express it like me. I just need to see you express it. But then we got to the meat of it as I continue to keep coming in, coming in. It's like, I've learned like, act like you've been there, but you haven't been there. You haven't experienced, you know, this here. Like, this is something that's happening with us. And it's just like, when you got to the meat at like the root of it, it just was like, you know what? I kind of put that feeling away a long time ago. I stopped preparing myself to be that way because I got disappointed a lot. So I won't be disappointed if I'm already ready. Right. If it's like, it's going to be the same response regardless. And that was just with that emotion. That wasn't even what the requirement is for you as a man. They didn't say you couldn't be happy. You just can't cry. You can't be a, you know, a wimp. You can't have your feelings hurt. And I look back because I've been guilty of it in different areas in just rearing a girl and a boy. Mm -hmm. I automatically felt like Josiah, our son being bigger, you'll be all right. You can walk to school, but Jair can't walk to school by herself. And it's just because of programming. We're already told that. I think I've sat and laughed with you when I said on the scary movies, when they hear a sound, it's like, go check it out. And I'm thinking, well, if they kill him, they coming for your ass too. So you two is better than one. You might as well either be prepared when they make it to you guys, you just going to go all in unless you dating uh, the Terminator or something. You got some special set of skills you, that you're going to do, you know, that I need to, you know, hey, back up. Oh, let me back up. He got this because this is what he does. You know, he's Jet Li or whatever. But other than that, it was always kind of odd to me how automatically you got it. The man, he's got it. Go check it out. Go see what that is. Kill this. Kill that. Do it. I mean, it probably is laughed at if a man is scared of. And I've done it to to our son before. Like, are you serious right now? You really yeah. scared of that? But the reality of it is, why can't you be? We're human. I mean, why do you have to not be scared of that? Why can't you have a fear of a rat? A fear of squirrels a fear of roaches bugs spiders lizards why can't you just be like it's like man you you a boy get over there no i don't like it either and i mean it's just been happening but because of all this going on right now it just really gets my goat that this man one he could have been cheating on jada this whole time and we never knew it 
they still chose to show the world they were together mm -hmm. and she chose to stay or whatever agreement they have. But this particular thing that happened, it was aired out to everybody. So it wasn't something that was kept in house. So your guy, your husband, first of all, the fact that he was OK with coming to the table, because I wouldn't have done it. I just emotionally I, I don't want to do it. You figure it out. I'm not going to be there. Her and August could have been at the table for all I care because I would have needed time to sit with that. And that's me as a woman. So him even showing up. And then when she said I was in my entanglement, he was cool with like redirecting. Like, really? Is that what it was? Like he displayed a modicum of restraint or reserve and the ability to have that dialogue that I could not have had. They have memes about when you get a woman mad, when a woman's fed up. R. Kelly done wrote songs about it. Khalees, I hate you so much right now. Another artist, I bust the windows out your car. They've written tons of stuff about women and how we get down when you hurt us. Mm -hmm. So just imagine if that was reversed. If Will brought Jada to the table and told her, I had an, I had an entanglement, you know, for her. Anything she did would have been deemed right in the world. If she had jumped across that table and punched him in his face, it would have been a million women like, Psh, huh, he deserved, I, he deserved that. You going to humiliate her like that? I mean, they would have gone all in. I know I've seen it and I know how we're expected. We're supposed to be, um, women are emotional. What she did, it was wrong, but it was right. Even when she said I was hurt. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. She never even apologized. That's another thing I looked at. And that's just me. I'm looking at all of it. If I come to you, even though we were separated, and then she said, I don't call it a transgression. Everything that happened there, she didn't do anything. You ended up being with another man. I was hurt. Not, yeah, I did it. I did it and we were separated. And I hate that we're having to do this with the whole world because the whole world hasn't been there when you did whatever you did to me. But this whole thing is happening with everybody. She didn't take any responsibility and she kind of just left him out there. Even when he said, I'm gonna get you back. It was you. You've already gotten me back enough. And then we reiterated, I'm going like I'm going to do it. And she was like, if you want to be petty and it's just like, it's not even about petty. How about you validate that the reason why he's even saying this stuff, petty or not, is because he's hurt. He can't even express it and just openly say, damn, you know, even though we were separated, this just hit different. Let me just take all this in. And if he did that behind closed doors, because it could be like that did happen. This still happened in front of us. And the world is able to tweet, post on Instagram, vlog, blog all about it. And it just has so much weight on, again, the emotion that he is limited in expressing or he can't express at all. And it, and it sucks. Well, I got two things I want to address. One, all the men that's on social media that is talking shit about August Alcina knowing his place as a side piece. I'm going to get to you women too, but the men, I want to let you in on a secret that's not a secret that we've all been knowing since the age of men. The number one reason why we quarrel and kill each other most times or even try to acquire power is because of the woman. So when you running around here talking about know your place and shit like that, if it was a woman that you had a situation with or a situation relationship, whatever you want to call it. Entertainment. Entertainment. Well, I don't care what it is. If it was somebody else that ran around and maybe it was your rival or something, I don't know. You going to have a quarrel or an issue with it and you be running around talking shit just like. Rick uh, Cross and 50. Exactly. That whole quarrel came behind some some female type stuff because he took his baby mama shopping or some shit like that. Now, granted, I don't know the inner workings of the store, and I feel like, you know, based on what I read, even in Rick Ross's book, he took it under the chin, and it is what it is, but make no qualms about it. Side piece or not, it's still an issue, you know what I'm saying? So, I really don't love it, but I love when men talk big shit on pertaining to how somebody's supposed to know their role until they in that role themselves. Mm -hmm. Everybody can talk shit about this man, you know, knowing he was a side piece. Look, most of y'all, y'all fall in love with the sex or whatever the case may be, and y'all lose y'all damn mind. From the, the Drake to Meek Mill beef to on down to what you said with Rick Ross and 50. So y'all can kind of miss me with the tough guy talk. That's the problem we have now. You guys always putting out 
this bravado shit. People like me, I entertain y'all and I laugh at y'all because I know it's foolery shit. And you will get older and mature and realize that shit you said ain't even true. Secondly, it affects the up and coming group that's coming behind you because they listening to you say that shit and they thinking, well, shit, you know what I'm saying? If, if I do this with a woman and I'm a side piece, I'm supposed to know my role. And you know, <laughs> it ain't no such thing as no fucking side piece. Now, for us going to these women who down and, and calling August Alcina a snitch. And so let me get this straight. And just go back to the double standard thing you was talking about. But it's several women that I've seen with interviews where they didn't came out and expressed their hurt and their disdainment for a situation they was in. And they crying and all this. I see it on paternity court all the time. Well, paternity court. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys, if you look throughout just the three or four years, you can probably pinpoint some people that's been in the Hollywood area or in, or just in your personal life where somebody was crying wolf and all this shit as a female. But then this dude is just saying whatever comes out in the wash at the end, you know, if I die after this, I want to die an honest man. So I think there's some nobility in that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I don't look at that as snitching or you going against the G code. You know what it is. First of all, they just cut this shit out with this G code shit because half y'all don't even follow the G code. So shut the fuck up with that. Secondly, this man came out. He what he did was express himself wholeheartedly. And really, I think based on the interview I saw, it, he wasn't even really touching bases on it. And he only answered it because the question was asked. And preface before that, when the question was asked, remember she said, because a lot of people I think that are responding didn't even watch the whole interview. No, because they, they ain't got enough attention span to pay attention for a whole hour to even understand what he was trying to convey. I've seen people say, I'm not about to read all this. Just tell me, <laughs> just tell, or even like when we do Let the minute. To the comments or the minute mark. When is he talking about Jada? The whole interview was about his growth spiritually is what i took it for but he was just saying how he grew and had a different understanding with where he came from the whole thing with black people right now and that question was asked before he answered it, he said i normally wouldn't answer it but i received so much backlash i lost business deals money shows he just named he said because and i was labeled a home wrecker and People are side eyeing, looking at me, and that's not even me. So I'm going to answer this. Why would you not answer something to clear your name? Exactly. So he was supposed again back to that emotion stuff. He was supposed to carry all yep. of Keep that, all that in, and yeah. just bear the just, weight. Man, you better be, be quiet. And, be the, and lose money. Be, be quiet. Hold all that. And he even before that he said, "I'm learning that when you hold stuff in, it makes you sick." Remember, he said, when you don't talk about something and it's making you sick and you hurt, I believe he gets it. And I believe, like most of the time, a great majority of the world is behind. They'll get it down the line when it happens to somebody close to them or them personally. But right now, it's so much prejudice. It's like, no, I'm not listening because this is how it's supposed to be. I'm looking at the fact that you see how we're talking about the two men and how the one person that's in there that was in the whole situation gets to walk away based oh, yeah. on not being and that's the whole premise. The ultimate thing is the double standard. But what I'm saying is with the situation, because you're talking about that specific topic, but it's in the entirety of just men, period. What we're trying to convey here is this is what happens all the time. Men are the ones that's walking around in the, in this particular situation where we're supposed to just let shit slide and, and not talk about anything. They're having to deal with a situation of social media and stuff downplaying them. But the woman gets to walk away scot-free. And that happens a lot of times in these situations where men can't be vulnerable. They can't tell their peace. They got to keep it to themselves. But the woman can come out and express their hurt, their disdain for a situation. They get to tell their story, and no matter how skewed that story is, they still look like the victim, and and the man has to bear the brunt of all of it. Now, I'm not saying that I condone any of this shit at all, but it does tie back into the whole point of being vulnerable and being expressive and saying, yo, that act right there, that shit really hurt my feelings, and I need you to know that. 
But because we're trained and reared from the ground up to not feel anything emotionally, especially when a woman do it, it's like, shit, it is what it is. On to the next one. And even if it had been flipped, I just thought about this while you were talking. What if August had relations with her and instead of him saying, I loved her, I committed my whole self to it. And they're laughing at him like, man, you know what it was. You got caught up. Even if he didn't do that, if he had got caught up, suppressed those feelings and came out because he was hurt and been like, man, I've been I've been banging Jada Pinkett for a minute. It ain't nothing. I hit that. They still would have been like, oh. <gasps> Why would you say that about her? But him suppressing like that she really hurt him and he's coming out that way, expressing it in an angry way. It's still like, so no, you're wrong. You do, yeah, you're you wrong. Don't. You just shut up. Don't you get attached and don't you talk about it either. You get to only experience the emotion between you two. You don't get to openly express your love through marriage. You don't get to openly express your commitment in any kind of way to her. You're a secret. And any woman, I think, too, you said it, that would deal with that. That's a whole nother thing. I mean, to each his own, but you said it when a woman I've seen comes forward yeah, and I says, get to y'all ass about that side piece shit. Cause y'all lose your mind about being a side piece and the dude keeping y'all ass a secret. Oh, I've seen where the woman says it was wrong. You know, I know I, I wrecked the home, but I was hurt. I've been mistreated and I just wanted to be loved. And I wanted to feel love as Jada said, I hadn't felt good in a long time. You got every reason. And now I'm not saying that for everybody, but the majority, that's why I want to talk about this. The majority is just like, no, be quiet. You a man, you on some BS. And it's, you know, it's a few that I've seen out there, but if they say we were taking a vote, they lost. Another thing uh, that when we were talking earlier that Josiah said, I just thought about right now too. He said he saw on Instagram, where uh, someone was saying, I learned from Will, if he could sit there on red table and, and take all that, I should be able to not trip when my girl likes pictures of dudes that got nice bodies and stuff. And I don't have a nice body. I'm a fluffy dude. But if he can do that, I should do this. There it is again. There it is. You see the suppression. No, you shouldn't. Because if you don't like something somebody's doing, you should be able to express that. And that's your relationship. Why should you take a lesson from if Will can sit there and take it like a shot of liquor being cheated on, her saying she didn't feel good, hadn't felt good for a long time, I should be okay. I shouldn't be tripping about you liking men's pictures that don't look like me. No, you shouldn't. If that's how you feel, it should be validated. In the relationship you're in, it's okay to feel like that. Because women can come in and be like, I know you wasn't looking at her. What you looking over there for? Oh, you like an oh, you like her ass. They make memes about it where they take their phones, check their man, everything because he's clicking like it's a double standard. No, absolutely not. If you catch your girl, I feel that, you know, I feel about the strip club, all that. If you catch your girl looking at something that doesn't resemble you and you feel some type of way about her doing it, there definitely should be a conversation had. It's OK. There's nothing wrong about it. You're communicating you might get to the bottom of something. If you say, hey, you might think that this is like not even a big deal. And you may say you wouldn't care if I did it. But I feel some kind of way about you repeatedly liking pictures of men that have this body type that I don't have. And then she could say, I think you whack for that. I'm not having that, but it's out. You had the opening to express yourself. That's how you felt, whether she validates it or not. And then you can find out if it's a deal breaker for you. Because you might decide this is big for me and you telling me, oh, well, I need to get over it or it's not that big of a deal, but I'm feeling some type of way about it. It's very small. I think we can have admiration for other people, but I think when you get into a relationship with somebody whose feelings you value more than a person's picture you like and that you've never met, I think you got to weigh it there. And that's where I'm at with it. Male, female, who you with, they are important. And I think that they should have the equal opportunity to express and with validation or you being open to understand rather than being understood. I need to know why you feel this way or how it makes you feel. And it's just me simply clicking a picture. Let's talk about it. That's just me. And, and again, everybody's relationship is set up differently because it might be a couple. They both liking pictures and they laughing about it. But it may be something else that gets they go. You know, it may be something else like 
I don't want you doing this, whatever it is. But that particular statement that was made, it was a person that has a large platform that said it. That's how Josiah was mentioning to me. And I just felt like, dang, out of that, you got that. If Will can take that, I should be able, I to, should be able to take it you know, as a man. And that's, and, that's, and that's, a, not, that's the message that keeps getting trickled down all the way to the kid that falls off the bike. That's man, the boy that shouldn't cry. It's that's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. And I feel so bad. This is another topic. But even at the end, we ride together, we die together. Bad marriage for life. And they laughed at it. But I looked at him. Who would say bad marriage for life? Drug addicts for life bad energy for life who would say bad luck for life who would say you know what i'm saying poverty for life that's not a joke there's nothing funny about that i mean they laughed it was cringy for me but i just was like wow this man even in this moment because she started it we ride together we die together i would have been looking at her ass I would have never finished it but in good sport and him trying to still be a man and express his strength and commitment for her they had her red table for her she needed to come to the table for some healing not him she said she needed to come so in all that i'm supposed to co-sign this shit <laughs> bad marriage for life <laughs> no 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 i just saw so much that he has to shoulder and we ain't gonna even get on what August has to shoulder. She kept saying, I learned so much in that experience. You hurt somebody. You're not even saying that you hurt somebody. I was going through something. I learned so much. We came so far. We're at a good place now. What about that whole ass human being over there that's just been discarded completely? Who you know, prior to you coming in their life, was battling with drug addiction, had lost a sibling, later on lost another sibling. You knew he was battling. They both agreed he was very sick. He was sick and you are okay with right now saying, I got so much from it. So which was it? Did you allow him to come in your life to help him? Or you was really a parasite? You took what you could from him and your selfishness and your codependency, as she put it, and he's discarded. You didn't even validate that you loved him back like that. And there it is, another man, he got to deal with it. This dude is going to suffer in silence. I don't know how it's going to come out. I'm praying for that dude because he said nothing in reference or directly about that interview. It's just kind of like coded stuff they're putting up. But he has not openly said, wow, wow. I'm over here saying I gave years of myself to you. Wow. And you're saying you were hurt. You hadn't felt good in a long time. Everything is you and I. Did you feel anything for me? Did you care for me? Was there a connection? She never said that. And she could say, that ain't the place for it. No, it is the place for it because it's aired out. You can't just overlook and not validate someone's feelings. And more specifically, what this whole topic is about are these men. Will has to figure it out. He got to just hold your hand. And he said in the interview, I'm just up here supporting my wife and her transgression. Remember, he made a joke about it. And there was truth in that joke. It's like it's truth in that. That's messed up. And the other dude, he just got to figure it out because you learned. You had a revelation. You understand. It's the most hurtful thing to me to know that it's two people in that. It's three of them, but it's two that may never, ever get to fully emotionally just be able to be free just to be vulnerable and have it validated like not in therapy because this shit didn't happen in therapy it happened in the world and they don't get to be validated the way that a woman would and therapy ain't the same because that's their job to listen to listen and let you let it out therapy is almost like in my opinion taking a drink or smoking a blunt because it's like oh i got to at least tell somebody yeah but it's like do they really care about what I'm going through or are they just penciling this shit in and telling me to express myself and getting paid by the hour? Yeah, it's a whole different aspect when you talking to somebody who ain't getting paid for it. And it's just like, dude, let, let me hear what's going on in your mind. And you know, I really love you and I'm caring for you. And that's male to male as a best friend. 
female, male, however you see it, or who, whoever that person is that's genuinely there that's allowing you to be vulnerable. And I think specifically with a lot of black men, I can't speak for anybody else, but I know specifically for my black men, we walk around just emotionally damaged all the time. And it's like, we're not telling anybody. I mean, fortunately enough for me, I'm able to get some of my feelings out on a music platform, things of that nature on different songs. Even through that, sometimes that's not enough because that's like therapy. You're putting it out there in the world and yeah, somebody can relate to it, but ain't nobody coming back and telling (laughs) you, man, I know how you feel immediately. Yeah. Like somebody may come in three years from now and be like, man, that song you made back in 2020 is 2025 now. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't the same as telling somebody right then and there and getting immediate response and feedback, not telling you, I know how you feel. Because when I went through, no, it's I know how you feel and I understand it, man, that's I hate you had to go through that, et cetera, et cetera. And if I had any part in doing why you feel the way you feel, I sincerely apologize. It doesn't happen that way. So you're just stuck with all this. Like you said earlier, displaced anger and you have no way of exposing it. You know what I'm saying? And then when you do, you get shit like what just happened today. And it's even worse now because like we've been talking about is social media. Because social media is undefeated. All they do is crack jokes. Mm-hmm. All they do is fucking crack jokes. You know, nobody understands the sensitivity level on certain things. And I'm real big on people need to stop being sensitive on certain things. But this particular situation is like, or anything else for that matter, I'm not going to act like I know what the sensitivity gauge should be. But what I'm saying is everything is not a joke and everything shouldn't be turned into a meme. And I just feel like in this day and age, people don't really necessarily know what what certain things do to certain people because it ain't them. I just think people need to have a more objective mind when they're looking at things as opposed to just looking at, oh, this is the G code or you the side piece. You ain't supposed to be feeling like that. You knew what it was. No, man. I mean, like I said, I don't want to get too caught up on the story itself. I want to stay on topic at hand with just the vulnerability. It's just we need the narrative to change for men and young boys that's growing up to be teenagers and future young men to let them know it's okay to cry. It's okay to let your best friend know or your girlfriend know or your mother or whoever transgress you in some type of way to tell them you hurt my feelings or I didn't like how that made me feel. If you feel like that's too girly, if you don't want to say it like that, say I feel some type of way. However, you need to get it out to make you feel better. And, and then you can work yourself to saying that really hurt my feelings. Then do what is necessary for you. But I'm telling you, you need to be able to do that because nothing good comes out of you suppressing feelings of a transgression that's been done against you and you can't say nothing. You just holding it in. It's a very explosive situation. It can become very violent verbally or it can be very violent physically. And actually, I would like to say more times than not, it usually happens to the person that doesn't really deserve it. Mm Mm-hmm. Because by the time you are exploding, at least in my experience, by the time I exploded, it wasn't even on the person that needed the explosion. It was on the next person that came my way and it was a trigger that they did and they sparked that caused me to fire off. And that person that did it don't even know what the hell they did. It was just because of all the things that was bottled up from the same type of issue that happened before. It happened over and over and over again. And you're like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm straight. But you are not straight. And then that same thing that pissed you off before. Now your cup is runneth over with that same issue. And that person comes and now all of a sudden you firing off on them verbally or you fired off on them with your fist. And then you back in the corner like, damn, I don't even know why I hit dude or I don't even know why I cussed her out like that. But that's usually what it boils down to is because something that has been done repeatedly that you just held in over time and you never addressed it. And then you got to a point where you couldn't take it no more. You are human. At some point you're going to break. Nobody is that mentally 
strong enough to keep holding that in even on the matrix when morpheus was there and the agent was trying to crack the code in his mind he's like eventually his patterns is going to go from this to that and they said only the mind can only take so much i mean it's a reference if you guys don't know it you know just go check out the movie but you can only take so much mentally before you crack so you don't want to get to that point you don't want to end up hurting somebody that doesn't deserve it and you don't even want to hurt yourself walking around that long when you can actually do something about it at least feel better even if the person doesn't acknowledge it you're just at least you're telling them hey this hurt me or i don't like the way that feel when you say that to me or how you say it to me or what you did to me it's not easy we need to unlearn some of this fake masculinity that we keep preaching to people because it's fake masculinity yeah if it fucking hurts it hurts if i pop a ligament in my knee i'm not going i'm not going to scream out loud my bone is out my skin but i'm not gonna yell like what kind of dumbass logic is that so yeah this was an interesting one for me because i know it does really touch home for me and i've never been in a situation such as the one we discussed but i can definitely definitely relate to suppressing emotions and stuff like that because it's like you thinking in your head what good is it gonna do if i say anything they're gonna tell me i shouldn't feel that way so what's the point of me even saying anything and then the disappointment of nobody being receptive is like, well, I've been trying to express this. Nobody ever cares. So why would they care now? So I get it. Yeah. Um, I always try to find the good things, even in the midst of something that really is unfortunate. Like find the silver lining, you know, but this could be looked at as a takeaway because the whole red table will and jada the whole thing that was an example and the reason why we were able to have this exactly. discussion the silver lining is we so, got to talk about so i don't even want to give her this because i could see her so doing this if we didn't do that these conversations would not have <laughs> even being had and it was my intention to bring about now i'm just being silly but you know people do crazy stuff but that is a byproduct us seeing that this conversation is being had but i still don't want to like negate or completely overlook that there's hurt there you know and i and i hope that both of those men they're all human but this whole dialogue is about men so for those particular men i hope that someone somewhere some space is made available for them to be vulnerable for them to be able to express themselves fully and just get that out also i want to to call to action all the women there's always a big equal rights we want equal rights we want to be treated fairly and the same as men so i would would ask that ladies give them their equal rights in this too give men their equal rights here be compassionate empathetic understanding let them be equal in that too because it's not equal it's not and and any woman if you sit and really think about it you know you have a son you have a daughter you know brother you know just take some time and reflect and then again my call to action item is to be a part of that change if you agree to create a space or lend your ear for men to have that place to be just as vulnerable as you're allowed to be to express yourself emotionally freely that you're allowed to have in the world understand it and be a part of that happening in a small way start in the home or the men that you know or in a big way i just ask that you seek to understand rather than be understood specifically with this double standard of men not having a place to be as vulnerable as we have pretty much i don't have anything else to say I just hope that there's some people that this is well received and there's a space created for some of the little boys and some other men. You know, maybe some people didn't know. But now, now, you know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggested topics, you want to keep this conversation going. You can email us at realfitradio at gmail.com. Our podcast is available on all platforms now. It drops every Monday. You can catch a snippet of it on our Instagram at real fit radio if you're not following us you definitely should be as always i hope that this inspired impacted or empowered someone until next time